he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So here you see this picture of a high priest made of man. He's not only going into the holy place, the holiest of holies, one time a year, and just once, and he goes in and he dares not go in unless he has blood. And when he goes in, he makes he uh, he says that he offers for himself and for the errors of the people. Now, this high priest was by himself. He, nobody else went with him. Nobody else was allowed in there. And he brought in blood. For the Bible says that without uh, remission, without the the uh, spilling of blood, there's no remission of sin. So that, the law is pretty serious. It requires something serious, doesn't it? It required the blood of bulls and of goats. And now he says, verse 8, The Holy Ghost signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing, uh, which was a figure for the time then present in which were both offered gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So here you see the conscience coming in here. You know, remember, remember the, when they were going to kill the girl in adultery, their conscience spoke, right? You know, our conscience is something that the Lord gives us, gives every person a conscience. And our conscience can, can smite us, can condemn us. And... And he says, this, when this high priest went in, there was, a, there was a forgiveness of sin. God covered the sin. But the conscience still got the people. You know, they still had a conscience of what they had done. And it just, it was like, this is good, but it's just not quite, it's just not quite doing it. Because that was never meant to be the end. That was just a shadow of things to come. Right? And then, um, verse 10, which stood only in meats and drinks, different washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the end of, until the time of reformation. So God had a plan. He was showing the people, He was showing them year after year, this is the way that sin is going to be dealt with. But here was the blood of bulls and goats. David says in Psalm 40, let's turn there for a moment. Psalm 40, um, let's see. Let's just start in verse 4. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts which, which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Mine ears have you opened. Burnt offering and sin offering have you not required. Now this does sound, I mean, this sounds like it's in contrast to what was required, right? But remember, that was a picture. That was just a type of what was to come. It didn't deal with it. The blood of bulls and goats could not remove the sin. And, they, and their conscience was not clean. And he says in verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O God. Yea, your law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, you know. So, he, he, and this is a prophecy. This is a prophecy about Jesus. He says, uh, I come to do your will, O God. Your law is in my heart. And remember in Hebrews we just read, he says, I put my, my law in their hearts and their minds. Right? And so we can go back to Hebrews. So uh, here, what we're seeing is we're seeing the Old Testament, the hopelessness of it, 
Us Gentiles were extremely hopeless. Right? We were without Christ, without hope in the world. And then verse 11. But Christ being a high priest of good things to come by a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, but as to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You know, as Christians, we can live uh, with a conscience that is condemning us. We can live in dead works. You know, dead works, it didn't say evil works. It didn't say bad works. They're just dead. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not living works. And so what we need to do from time to time is we really need to examine ourselves. We really need to look at ourselves, our own heart, and say, what is motivating me? Why am I doing what am I, I am doing? Am I living under the law? Am I trying to perform for Jesus? Am I trying to make Jesus love me more? Remember I shared the testimony of me picking up the trash? Right? I'm going to be a good Christian boy. I'm going to pick up every piece of trash. And if I didn't, I feel bad about it. Every time I walk by something. You know, even today, I walk by a piece of trash and I'll think about that, you know. That was just the way, that, that was a stronghold in my own life. And it, was, it went into other things. If I could just, if I just study the Bible more, God will love me more. If I can just read my Bible five hours a day and not four. <clears throat> Did anybody get convicted over that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, you're, you're more mature than me. <laughs> if I can just do this, and then it will be done. And then God will love me and I'll have mercy. Well, Jesus was on the cross and said, It is finished. What was finished? What was finished was justice. Justice was met there on the cross. God poured out the, the fury that, that the justice that, uh, that we deserved it was upon Jesus. That's where it was finished. Now what can I do to add on to it? Nothing. You can't do anything. I got to do something. You believe what he did for you. Believe that he died for you. Now does that mean oh I can't do anything, so I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to keep living my life the way I want to live. Well, that's that. You don't. You don't understand grace. That you don't have an understanding of the grace of God. Jesus said, "I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more." Jesus says, "Come to me. I'll give you a new life." But that new life's not for you to go out and still live like the pig. That new life is so that you can go and live abundant. I, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. That's what Jesus wants to give. So you can't add on one little bit to it. It was finished on the day of the cross. I mean, that's it. Finished. Done. Now, I want to read just uh, several more verses here. Let's go to verse 26. I mean, all of it is really just amazing. I mean, it just, it just uh, really uh, encourages me when I read these chapters. Well, let's see. I want to read a few more. Maybe let's, let's look at verse 19. Let's look at 19. When Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and, and hyssop and sprinkle both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined you to. So here these blood of the bulls and of the goats and that's how the covenant was ratified through shedding of blood um, and he sprinkled uh, the blood on the tabernacle and all the vessels. 
Verse 22, Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. Um, it was necessary, therefore, that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices. Verse 24, For Christ not entered in, not into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself, uh, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have often suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now notice that once. Once means how many times? One. One. Right? Verse 27, it's appointed unto man to die once, but after this is the judgment. Verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, just chapter 10, let's just keep reading a little bit of this. Um, verse 40 is quoted up there, but we're going to go to uh, verse 9. Lo, I come unto the, to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, that's the old covenant, that he may establish the second, the new covenant, by the which will we're sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? Once. Once for all. Uh, and every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. It covered it. It can never take it away. So the people were, they had a conscience of sin all the time, all the time. If they did something wrong, they were supposed to bring an offering. They had so many sacrifices and offerings. Verse 12, But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are, uh, that are sanctified. So here you see the beauty of uh, the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary. This is a message that Christians need to, to teach themselves over and over again and meditate upon. You know how many believers I see who constantly walk in condemnation? It's like a constant thing. It's always there in the back of their mind that they're just not quite good enough. Well, let me tell you, it's not that you're not quite good enough. You're nowhere near good enough. I mean, let's just get it out on the table. Listen to this. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Die he for me who caused his pain. For me... Uh, whom, him, whom him to death pursued. <coughs> Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? King. Right? That's a hymn we sing, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Jesus shed his blood for you. One time. He went into heaven once. And now verse 19. Here's the fruit of it. Remember before, you weren't allowed into the holy place. You weren't allowed into the holiest of holies. You didn't have any part or lot of the matter of the Lord. You were strangers and foreigners, enemies of the cross. You know, it's like the prodigal uh, son thinking... I tell you what, when I get back, I'll just tell them, I, I'm just going to be a servant. Right? I did such bad things, I don't deserve anything. I'm just going to be a servant. A slave for my, for, for my father. And boy, the father had other plans, didn't he? Boy, the father met him and forgave him. And freely forgave him. And he put a ring on him, shoes, a robe, and they had a party, right? They had a celebration. He says, verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness, and sisters included in that, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, 
that is to say, his flesh. What happened to that veil? It was rent, right? From the top to the bottom. God. This is God's. God is doing this. 